So TARDIC is a wonderful and unique Army institution. It sits directly in the middle of Automation Alley. So we have access to the best and brightest from across the automotive industry. And we're located in, in Metro Detroit, which brings with it a whole host of academic institutions that are easily accessible. So, so TARDIC as an entity has only been around since the 90s. Before that, it was a lab affiliated with the Tank and Automotive Command, which has been here on the Detroit Arsenal since the 1940s. And so it's really part of that uh, ground domain of excellence for ground vehicles, ground combat vehicles, and recently we've been also working with uh, ground vehicle robotics. We are focused on the latest and greatest. Other areas are focused on what's currently existing. TARDIC is focused on what's coming down the road. The robots that I work on are actually a research robot, so we've converted 48 of them from the fielded systems into our GVR bot design, and they're used for research. So we've got them at universities, we have them at cyber contractors and other contractor sites. We've got a bunch at Army Research Lab, they're at DARPA. So we have all these robots are spread around the world and people are using them as a common platform. So research developed here can now be shared much more easily. We use a ROS backbone. ROS is the robot operating system. It is an open source framework to do robotic development. It's a collection of different uh, software libraries, components, capabilities that has allowed different uh, academic and industrial organizations to be able to work together and grow the skill set without having to start over. ROSM is our efforts to get a military version of it. So there are specific needs in military robotics that regular roboticists working in academia or working on just regular cars won't need. Uh, we'll have payloads and that's why we need something specifically for the military. Now recently we've also been helping the Mi Michigan Department of Transportation in terms of proofing out vehicle to infrastructure and vehicle to vehicle comm systems for our convoys. And so that's the work that we've done on I-69 and up at the Blue Water Bridge. So the Blue Water Bridge project was an interesting project where we used dedicated short range communications, V to V, vehicle to vehicle and vehicle to infrastructure communications. We took uh, two commercial trucks and two military uh, Class 8 tractors and we did an event where we went from Port Huron, Michigan to Sarnia, Canada and the last vehicle was totally autonomous and we did that across the international border so we had to go through all the toll booths and customs. So that's that sort of international collaboration to show that these technologies can work. Uh, the other piece that we've been doing working with the Mission National Guard has been on combat vehicle robotics. So COVER is the Combat Vehicle Robotics Program, and it is looking at developing the autonomy behaviors for robots that will apply to combat. So right now, a lot of the focus in autonomy that you see in the commercial sector is based on on-road driving. It doesn't really apply to combat. Uh, where we're going, there are no roads. And so that's where COVER comes into play. It allows us to uh, generate the autonomous behaviors so that the robots will react to contact the same way that a soldier does. We're not creating terminators or these autonomous platforms running around, but it's really, can I provide overmatch to the warfighter by offsetting them from the lethality? Right now, in my combat platform, I am right there in the fight. I am likely to take casualties, but if I could be maybe half a terrain feature behind and let the robot take fire first, then I can bring more of our folks home a hole in the line. We were able to, for the first time, bring a robotic combat vehicle into a real life training scenario with the unit up in Grayling, Michigan, part of the Northern Strike event, which is a National Guard training exercise. So we were able to integrate into the unit's training exercise by bringing our robotic asset and using it as, as one of the feeders into, into their training elements. We were able to integrate with the unit, communicate to the unit to show manned unmanned teaming technologies. So MUMT is manned unmanned teaming and it is the Army acronym that applies to taking robots and making them a member of an operational team. For us right now, you have to look at it as a spectrum. So as it stands today, robots are tools and so the thought behind MUMT is taking them from being a tool and making them just like anyone else in your squad. So ultimately, MUMT will become a force multiplier for combat effectiveness. Having those unmanned assets out in front, using them effectively with a manned element, we can get more done with less. This is a very exciting time to be at TARDEC. We are on the cutting edge of technology. Our job is to bring in the state of the possible 
and get that to our soldiers so they have the, the greatest and best equipment in the world. So I think that working at Tardic is one of the best jobs I've ever had in the Army. It has allowed me to take all of my experiences in, in combat and training and then apply them into new technologies that I think will make an impact, not just for the warfighters that are currently in the Army, but my kids. Uh, I've got small children, and so someday when they go to serve in the Army, hopefully they will have fantastic technology that their dad helped to create.